Welcome, my friends, to Law Talk, brought to you by the Favela Law Firm. Uh, remember, their number is 570-788-4191, or go to their website, favelalaw.com. Uh, my guest is uh, the main man, Connie Favelo. Conrad, how are you? Doing good today, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, nice summer so far? So far, nice, very busy, but good. Yeah. Um, I have two questions, all right? I uh, got a call. Um, the first question came via email. My email is sam at ssptv.com, incidentally. And she wanted to know, what does your law firm, you know, offer? What are, what are our practices, yeah. I think, is what the question would be. Well, primarily, uh, we're a personal injury law firm. Uh, uh, we like to say we're, we're, we're the uh, law firm in the Hazleton area that, that does personal injury primarily, we say. It's the only thing we do every day, and it is. Uh, every day we work on uh, injury cases for our clients. We do other things, uh, but primarily our focus is uh, personal injury. Okay, you do wills? We do wills and estates. They're, that's the other area of practice that we have. I do, uh, I do, I do estate work uh, as well. And we do have a couple of corporate clients uh, I handle those uh, for very few, but they're good corporate clients in land development and some other corporate issues. Corporate issues. Yeah. Now, a lot of people know you, Connie. Uh, a lot of people are seeing Alexi on TV all the time. Uh, tell me about your daughter, you know, her background. Well, Alexis, uh, she's my daughter. She is, uh, she's been with the firm now for, uh, I guess, going on to eight or nine years. She, she spent, uh, seven years in the Luzerne County District Attorney's Office. She got a lot of trial experience uh, there, primarily trying DUI homicide cases and child abuse cases. Very tough, uh, difficult uh, trial assignments from the DA's office. She, she started work there with uh, District Attorney Musto and then concluded with uh, District Attorney, now Judge, Salavantis. So she has uh, quite a bit of trial experience uh, in Luzerne County, knows the judges, works very closely with uh, uh, Pennsylvania State Police, as you might suspect, over those years. So she has very good and very uh, a lengthy experience in, uh, in accident-type cases, she, uh, uh, particularly on the DUI homicide side. She knows how to investigate them. Uh, she can pick up the phone and call a state trooper, just mostly, most of the time she knows them. Uh, she's worked with the accident reconstructionists in, uh, in PSP and with accident reconstruction engineers. So she's got quite a background in how to piece an accident uh, investigation together and find out what actually happened. It's interesting when we talk about how many years the Favello family's been involved in law. It's going on close to 100 years now. It'll be almost 100 years, yeah. 1929, my grandfather, uh, I might have mentioned this on the first show, he, he and his brother uh, grew up in the United Charities home, and uh, they were self-made men and started their practice in downtown Hazleton. My grandfather in 1923, and uh, his, his brother, Rex Falvello, uh, in 1929, and they serviced, uh, at the time, the Hazleton immigrant population because they could both speak Italian. Yeah. So that was their clientele, and then my father came into practice in 1953, and uh, he did a lot of municipal work. He was a solicitor for Hazleton Area School District for quite a while, about 13 years, uh, but then, uh, Really, he got into uh, uh, what we call complex injury litigation and uh, was lead counsel uh, for what we call the Puerto Rico air crash disaster case. That was right as I was coming out of law school. It was a plane crash in Puerto Rico that involved a couple of local people, four of whom were killed in that crash. and. 
he represented them and he ended up being lead counsel for all of the people on the plane uh, during the uh, liability trial in federal court in New York. And, uh, and that's when I got into, into this work um, because uh, at the time, even though I was still in law school, I was working on the case with him. We had to go down to Puerto Rico for the, for the damage side of the case because that's where the accident happened. We were in federal court there. Um, myself as a very young, uh, you might say, intern, and eventually when I got out of law school. So uh, that got me into it, and I've been doing it ever since for the past 48 years now. Mm -hmm. So your other daughter is, in, uh, or your sister, Paula? Uh, my sister Paula was an uh, administrative law judge for Social Security for quite some time. She, uh, uh, she finished up her tenure there at the Wilkes-Barre Social Security office, and uh, yeah, my sister Nina is also an attorney in Washington D.C. Yeah, so we have we have three. In the, uh, I'm the oldest of five, and uh, we we have three of us are attorneys. That's right. Uh, your, your son Tony said it's it, being a lawyer to him is like as exciting as exciting as going to a funeral. <laughs> he'd, <laughs> he'd rather be an orthopedic surgeon. Well, he's uh, I'm very fortunate. I have a great family. Uh, are, yeah. Thankfully very accomplished. I have I have my parents uh, to thank for that. They were uh, very very keen on on education. My mother was an educator, uh, taught special needs children in the Hazleton School District for 30 years. So uh, she, uh, she made it known to all of us in her own special way uh, how important education was. Yes, yeah. Well, you, you know how close your dad and I were. Yeah. I mean, I remember you guys running around yeah. the house when we would yeah. be going out. But getting back to the, to the viewer's question is we do personal injury. That's primary, primarily what our practice is, uh, wills and estates. Uh, and some corporate work. And of course, real estate is very much involved with estates as well, uh, because many times we'll have an estate where uh, the person who passed owns a home. You may have heirs, executors, either out of town or even out of state, and the home has to be sold for any number of reasons. They don't want it or sometimes the home has to be sold to generate cash for the estate. So uh, real estate is part and parcel of estate work. We've done real estate work over the years as well. Okay. Second question, which will lead us into what we want to talk about today. So the lady called me and says, Mr. Lassant, when, ask Mr. Falvello, when do we, when should a person call a lawyer when they're in an accident? I was in an accident. Um, I was fine at the time. We went outside. We took pictures of the <clears throat> the vehicles, and you know we exchanged the information. And you know it was a pretty good uh, you know bang on the side of my car. But she said so. Uh, you know I remember hearing saying if you're in an accident, call Falmella Law Firm. She said I figured well you know everything's fine except two weeks down the road, I started getting some pains in my back. All right. Uh, and then when I went to the doctor or whatever that was related to the accident, okay, now I'm in a situation where I should have done, what should I have done? Okay. That's a very good question from the viewer because we see this uh, fairly frequently. Um, many times uh, people are in a, a collision, an accident, and you may consider it what, uh, what the insurance company calls minor, okay? Uh, and turns out maybe they're not minor. You may have minor damage to your car, but in many cases the car can absorb the impact, but that still doesn't mean that you're not thrown around inside the car and you can receive any types of injuries from cuts and bruises to uh, something more serious, even a, a herniated disc in your neck. And uh, oftentimes they don't really manifest themselves with symptoms until several or even more days after the accident. So uh, we always say, look, give us a call. It doesn't cost you anything to talk to us. Uh, one of the things we take pride in in, in uh, my law firm is that when you call us, you're gonna talk to a lawyer. Uh, some of the bigger firms, uh, you'll call them, maybe they won't call you back you know, in a day or two or, 
or however long, or, or they do call you back and you'll talk to a, a paralegal or your case will be managed by a paralegal. Uh, in our firm, Alexis and I do the work. We talk to the clients. That's something I've liked to do over, over my career. I feel that's important and I feel it's our obligation to the client to do it that way. Uh, but it doesn't call or cost anything to, to the client to, to call. Uh, and even a first meeting, I'll say, come on in, we'll talk about it. Uh, we can give you a little kind of a road map on what to, uh, what to expect and what to do if something turns up. Uh, so that's, that's what we recommend. Uh, but to this viewer, yes, you, you, know, you know, talk to, if you have a lawyer already, talk to them uh, because if there's a gap there between the accident date and when your symptoms occur and when you see your, in many cases, primary care physician, uh, then you have to make sure to tell them, the physician, what happened when and how. What we see is a lot of times we'll get the records and that first visit after the accident, there'll be no mention whatsoever in the doctor's records about the accident. And that can be harmful to the claim. Uh, and we talk about how important it is to give the doctor a complete and thorough history of what happened. Because sometimes we'll see in the record, patient in today, sore neck, you might get some type of a prescription medication such as Flexerol or something like that to calm down the, uh, the spasms and then off you go and there's no mention of the accident. Uh, it's important to give a complete history uh, and lay it out for the doctor in as much detail as you can as to how you got to that point of having those symptoms that caused you to come and see a doctor. So actually what should have happened or what, what should happen is you know you had an accident uh, and your car was, I mean, I saw the picture, the right side of the car was smashed right in. Um, even though she was feeling good, probably what she should have done or anyone in that situation, I don't know if I would have done it, but what now you're telling me is, you know, give your, you know, call, call your firm, say, look, I was in an accident, I feel good, I just want to report it, what do you suggest I do, you know, before I move any further, okay, everything, you know what I mean? So at least you're giving me advice right at the time that you know I had this accident that, is that that, that uh, is correct and that's uh, important yeah that's that's that. important for for the reason I think primarily the reason that I just mentioned yeah yeah, yeah. is uh, is because uh, the the history of how you, if it's a neck or whatever it is how that happened uh, a should be important for the doctor to know yeah. because one of the considerations the doctor may have is oh, this was a traumatic injury, okay? So was it work-related? Uh, you know, when did it happen? Uh, how long ago? What are your symptoms? Have you taken any medication? Get detailed to the doctor because that will help the doctor treat you. Yes. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, and it'll be in the record at least. And it'll be in the record. And when insurance companies get involved, the other for the other party, the defendant, um, they're going to want your medical record. So okay. if they see the medical record, the first visit, and it's detailed there, uh, that's the kind of information that they need to have. I'm talking to attorney Conrad Favello, folks. The show is called Law Talk. Uh, any questions you have for a good attorney, give me an email at sam at ssptv.com. Uh, remember, my friends, if you learned anything from the shows we do with uh, uh, talking about accidents, check your insurance policy. Make sure you have full tort, full tort. Extremely, extremely important, my friends. There are a lot of people driving these days without insurance. And that's when the problem comes in. If they hit you, okay, at least you're gonna be covered with full tort. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Law Talk, folks. Brought to you by the Favela Law Firm. 570-788-5191, favelolaw.com for all of your information. My guest today, Conrad Favello, attorney Conrad Favello. All right, so we are talking about an accident and you have to, you know, you, you have to file suit, okay? Um, what's involved when you're filing suit? Well, I'll back it up a step first, Sam. The, the, the first thing is the accident itself. You have to get the facts 
about how the accident happened. And that can be very diverse. It could be very simple, like somebody ran a red light or a stop sign and I got hit and you can uh, see the extent of the damage to both vehicles and uh, reconstruct the accident very simply. Uh, but others are not so easy. It may happen in the middle of the night. Somebody might leave the scene of the accident. Uh, it could be oftentimes a catastrophic accident, multiple vehicles. Uh, and then you have to work, if you can, with the investigating uh, police force, be it uh, a municipal police force or Pennsylvania State Police or both. So that's, that's the first order of business in our book is to uh, pin down as best you can all of the relevant facts of the accident and how it happened because in many cases uh, the ability for police at the scene to investi investigate the accident right there and get all the statements that being it could be limited. Um, you know we, we had a, a case uh, fairly recently where uh, one of our client, the, the person was seriously injured. They couldn't talk to him at the scene of the accident because he was carried away emergently by an ambulance to a hospital and, and he was so serious they, they never got to speak to him about how the accident happened. So uh, you have a lot of variables. So uh, when we sit down with you, we'll talk about that. Uh, we do the legwork with our investigator if we have to go out and uh, take statements. I mean, we've gone all over to take statements, accidents that have happened in um, Franklin County, PA, or up in Lackawanna County, or wherever, because even though a lot of our clients are from the Hazleton area, not all the accidents happen in Hazleton. You know, they can happen traveling on vacation or out of state or, or whatever. So that's the first order of business, is to get the investigation, the accident facts, uh, where we think they need to be in order to put together a suit. And that's important because when you're filing suit, uh, you are obligated by law to put down the facts of how the accident happened in your suit documents, primarily the complaint. Uh, it's a very detailed document that we have to prepare and file with the court. Uh, and that's what the courts are interested in first. That's what we call the liability or fault part of the case. Who's at fault? Are they responsible? Uh, is it 100% responsible? 80% responsible? What have you? Uh, so that, that part of the, the case is, is critically important, and that's the accident investigation piece. At the same time, uh, we talk to our clients and help uh, guide them, if you will, uh, through the process of their treatment, from who pays for my medical bills, uh, to knowing what doctors and other specialists they may be seeing, because we have to get those records. So at the same time, we're piecing together the facts of the accident. Uh, we are also keeping up to date with their treatment and obtaining records, because once we put the insurance company on notice of our representation, the first thing they're going to do is ask for medical records. And we don't, we don't give those to the adjuster until we're ready to give it to them. Uh, oftentimes, and, I, and this is very important, I would, I would say this to anybody who's in an accident. If you're in an accident, you can talk to your own insurance company, but do not talk to the other party's insurance company before you talk to us or an attorney. Because they're gonna take a statement from you, they're gonna ask you leading questions about how the accident happened, and I can almost assure you that those leading questions are gonna be questions that favor their insured and not you. They're gonna be questions that say, well, after the accident, you felt pretty good. Yeah, you didn't even call an ambulance, no. Don't talk to them at all. That, that, that's a pothole you don't wanna step in, in my opinion. Uh, talk to an attorney first. We will communicate with the other side's adjuster. If they want records, do not sign an authorization for them because they'll get your records first. We recommend against that. You give us an authorization to get your records and we'll deal with them. Uh, so don't try to go it alone. It, it, I don't think that's a good idea, uh, particularly in an injury case. Um, 
for the reasons we mentioned earlier, Sam. You know, if, if, if that caller had tuck up, you know, same thing, didn't get an ambulance, didn't go to a doctor, you're giving that statement to the other insurance company two or three days after the accident. It just makes it much more difficult to convince the insurance company that your injury is from the accident because causation uh, is an important piece of, of, the, uh, uh, of the equation. And they can say, well, yeah, you may have a neck, neck injury or whatever, but it's not from the accident. You know, you didn't go to a doctor for two weeks or three weeks or whatever, whatever it might be. So you have to be very, very oh careful there. Yeah. So that, that's why it's critically important in my view uh, to give us a call right away. Uh, we'll talk to you and sit down with you and guide you through that. Uh, the, the second part of, of filing a suit is uh, when you, you have to put in the complaint, the particulars of the accident, but you also have to identify your injuries. And many times that can't be done uh, shortly after the accident because you, if your treatment's continuing, you could be three, four, five, six, even a year and still under treatment for the accident injuries. We can still put a complaint together. You can always amend the complaint to include injuries as they develop or manifest themselves. But you want to be somewhat detailed in, in mentioning the injuries in the complaint. Uh, in Pennsylvania, we have what they call a two-year statute of limitations. That means from the date of the accident, you have two years to file suit. If you don't file suit in two years and you haven't settled your case in that time, it expires. There's no going back. And uh, one of the things that, that uh, as an attorney, uh, I don't like to see is someone call us two years and six months after an accident. Say, I tried to work with the insurance company. They didn't, you know, they just stood back, did nothing. Uh, what can I do? And unfortunately, if that's the case, our answer is nothing, nothing. Okay, because insurance companies know the two-year statute. And uh, so, again, comes back, call an attorney, call us right away. You know, it's amazing how you, you have to be so careful in what happened to fairness, what happened to be honest, you know, and, it's, and you're right, uh, Connie, it's just as sad that you have to protect yourself that some of these insurance companies, and I had a, an experience with, uh, you know, how they try to trick you and how they try to do... Um, you know, different things. It was a home uh, and something happened in my house. Uh, but um, it's, it's just sad. It really is sad. That's why we have people like you out there, okay? Now, what are the options? We, we talked about ADR, and I got about uh, two minutes left. Well, two, uh, ADR, Sam, is something that's become more prevalent in the litigation arena. Um, and as I mentioned to you, particularly over the past two, two and a half years with the uh, with all that we've gone through with COVID, uh, in most courtrooms, you could not have a jury trial because you have jury pools of hundreds of people. You had four or five, you know, juries going at one time, jury selections. Uh, that was just prohibited uh, during a, a, a large part of COVID. And what happened is that all the judges, uh, I'm sure to their disappointment and even frustration, they could not have jury trials or civil jury trials because criminal jury trials are time sensitive. They had to address those first. So unfortunately, judges took on more casework on civil work. Civil cases got pushed back and now they're trying to catch up. So where do you go when you want to, uh, if you will, litigate or adjudicate uh, an injury claim? What's become more popular and, and prevalent in our business is what they call ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution, uh, which is either mediation or an arbitration. So uh, uh, if we're running out of time, we could talk about that, but it's, it's an agreement between the parties to resolve the case by arbitration, mostly, where you try the case before a retired judge by agreement. And there are many options there. We could talk about those another yeah, time before. Yeah. If we're um, running out of time today. Yeah, what, there's a, a lot of questions I know people have. Um, <clears throat> maybe sometime we'll, we'll pick up on this in the next show. Oh, I think it's important. Yeah. I think it's important because we've done it a long time. I've served as an arbitrator 
decided cases. Uh, I've tried many uh, arbitration cases, and I think it, in, uh, in the right case, it's the right way to go, quite frankly, as opposed to a jury trial. The show is called Law Talk, my friends, sponsored by Favela Law Firm. Uh, any questions you have, uh, they have their website, favelalaw.com. Uh, don't hesitate to call. Believe me, simple phone call doesn't cost you anything uh, to get the correct information. As you say, there's a lot of people out there that are not nice, that are not nice, my friends. So make sure you're protected. We'll see you next time.